Before proceeding with more work, let us build the thank you.html page, which is supposed to load when we click on the submit form button. So what I'm going to do is um, hit command A on this page, on the contact page, to select everything and then copy it, command C, create a new file, uh, command N, and then paste. Okay. And I'm also going to remove everything um, inside, let me see, um, everything inside div ID content. Okay, and this is where I want to just insert a thank you message. So let me go ahead and do that inside of a P, so open um, the P element and close it. And let's give this P an ID, thanks. And what we want the phrase to say, thanks for submitting the form. Looking forward we're having a great time in Europe. Okay, and then let's insert a couple of breaks so that we go and type on a new line and then A, open the A element and close the A element And um, what we will write here is basically the term, the word back home. Okay, href. If we want this button back home to take us back to the home page, then the URL here should just be index.html. Okay, this is all. So let's save this and uh, call it thank you dot html remember that uh, the way you're typing thank you dot html should match exactly how you have um, thank you dot html written in your contact right here okay otherwise it won't load so let's go to our contact page refresh the page uh, pretend we submitted the form for now and then click click on submit form and we get uh, the thank you page with this weird looking message so let's style it now obviously we are on the thank you.html page it shows in the url so let's nicely style this real quick before moving on to some further explanations um, in style.css at the very bottom i'm going to create the thank you section Thank you section and I'm going to go ahead and say P found thanks open co close curly braces let's put all this in a box so background color found seven six seven six seven six margin let's center it zero auto with you know you can give it a pixel dimension you can give it a percentage dimension it doesn't matter let's make it um, again 550 pixels or so uh, padding 40 pixels so that it's nice and centered within the gray rectangle text align we want to center the words within the box that we're creating so text align center and color so that the fonts uh, within the gray box what color do we want them to be white on gray is nice so i'm just going to use white okay let's see how this looks now refresh the page this is what we just created white text on a gray background we also want to style this back home button because it's not actually too nice um, and uh, it's the generic underlined purple of the browser. Let's go ahead and style that as well. 
Now I, I just noticed that the A doesn't have um, an ID. Okay, so let's go ahead and give the A an ID. Um, let's just call it back. Okay, it makes sense because it's going back home. So A pound back open close curly braces color let's make it that nice orange we've been using FF3000 and remove the underline by using the text decoration none property okay let's refresh uh, something happened this is supposed to become orange what oh there you go you see it's great to make mistakes because you realize what uh, what you've done I have uh, seven numbers here I should have six there you go refresh so orange that's my orange but I also wanted to hover to a nice color so I'm going to take all this copy it and here I will say hover and I would just, oh, inside the hover section, I would just put the change that I want. I don't want to see any text decoration property because I don't need it. I just want a change in the color. And I would like it to change to a light gray. Okay. So when I hover over back home, it should say back home in light gray. Okay. So this is, this is what we created, you know, feel free to, if you don't like this gray color, remove the whole gray, you can just have black text on a white background, it's up to you, you know, these visual things, but mainly the, the color palette of um, this work is grays and oranges and whites and blacks. Okay, excellent, so now if we go to the form again, and we click on the submit form button, it should take us to the thank you page. Thank you for submitting the form and so on. Now let's explain a few things. Let's go back to the form and um, let me again submit uh, the form and pay attention to the URL now. Just look at the URL when I click on submit form. Okay, it shows me a nice URL. Obviously this is, this path is my, uh, you know, it's my local machine. I'm not working through a server so the path is wherever my folder containing my work is okay but still it's a nice clean URL um, the URL is because of the fact that I have the word post for the method attribute okay what if I change post to get okay we have two options either post or get let's save this and see what happens now I'm going to go to my form and I'm going to enter some values. Enter your name, Maral. Is there anything you'd advise change? No. Um, I'll be doing the cooking. Let me know your favorite meal. Let's say sushi um, and pasta. Uh, you have the tendency to be moody. I'd like to be left alone maybe in the evening. Um, the country, the, the city I'd like to go to is Zurich. And upload your file. Let's pretend I did. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and submit the form and take a look at the URL. Okay, so submit. Okay, obviously uh, the form goes to the server and um, the thank you page is loaded. But let's take a look at this URL now. So let me show you what's happening. As of here, okay, it says thank you.html fine because it loaded the thank you.html page. And then it starts by showing what the user entered, right? It says identity equals morale. And so with the and, it moved to the next control. Advice equals no. What is advice? And Italian food, e food equals on. Okay. What is this? Uh, what is what, what's happening here? Let's go to our uh, contact and look at the name attribute that we've been postponing all the way up until now. So if we look at the first uh, control, the first control is the type text into which I entered my name. And we gave the name attribute the value identity. So wherever I entered Maral, it says identity equals Maral. If I continue 
this is the text field, um, the text area I mean. And the name here is advice. And what I entered inside of that text area is the word no. So it's telling me advice, as you can see, advice equals no, whatever I typed there. Let's continue. For the food, I chose, um, if I'm not mistaken, I chose pasta and sushi. So it probably should say Italian food, Japanese food, right? So it says Italian food is on, Japanese food is on, as you can see, right? And that's because that's what I clicked. And it gets Italian food as the value of the name attribute and Japanese food as the value of um, the name attribute for the second checkbox. So what is this name attribute? What is it doing? We use the name attribute to access the values that the user entered. The values entered by the user are collected in the server. Let me give an example. For example, uh, values such as 31 for the age of a person, 56 for the height of a person, and 120 pounds for their weight, right? But these values are collected as numbers, 31, 56, 120. What do these mean? They mean nothing unless they're associated with a value for the name attribute. How will the back-end programs in the server know what 31, 5, 6, and 120 stand for. They will know through the name attribute. And as you can see here, let's look at the simplest example, which is name identity, and that's where I entered my name. It used the value identity to return the word morale. So it says identity equals morale. Otherwise, what is morale? It's just a word inside the server. What is Italian food? What is... Um, what is anything I write when I said no? What is it? It means nothing. So these data that the user entered mean absolutely nothing unless they're associated with a value for the name attribute. And that's how they are distinguished by the backend programs inside the server as what is the role of each? What is each? Is this a name? Is this an age? Is this the temperature? Is this... Um, a comment, what is this? So that's the importance of the name attribute and we can absolutely not do without it.